So we already saw the first part of the circuit which says that if enable is equal to 1, my D is coming at the output here. However, we are implementing this using transmission gates. So there will be a PMOS whose input is going to be enable bar. Now we have already seen that this should be connected to an inverter. So this currently is my Q. This is my Q bar. We saw that we'll give it to another inverter and that will be my Q. But this Q and this Q, though being same, we cannot connect it or we cannot short it directly because in the case where enable is equal to one, this will be a new Q and this will be an old Q. Don't get confused. In simple words, we should have some control before we connect both these Qs together. And let's see what is that control right now. So this is nothing but this where this becomes my enable bar and this becomes my enable which is nothing but exact complement connection of the CMOS transmission gate 1. Let's understand what is going to happen due to this and this is going to be nothing but my output. Let's see what's happening here with different different cases. So when enable is equal to 1 that means this NMOS transistor is on that also means enable bar is equal to 0 so this PMOS is also on so Q is equal to D at the same time inverter 1 will be producing Q bar which is equal to D bar so this is correct this is correct inverter 2 will produce an output which is equal to Q so I got my same Q so Q this is on this is Q this is Q bar and this is Q However, this is what happens when enable is equal to one. That means enable bar is zero. So that means these transistors are off. And what I get is my Q to be equal to D when my enable is equal to on because this is part is cut off right now. Let's see the second case. When enable is equal to zero, I want my previous Q to be holded and that should be my new output. We have already seen this in the truth table. So when enable is equal to zero, that means this is zero. Enable bar is one. That means this transistors are off. So no effect of D will be seen. This Q, which might or which could have lost its value due to chart leakage. Now in the previous cycle only had become Q bar, which we already saw. So Q had become Q bar and then it had also become Q again with another inverter. And now because enable is equal to zero and enable bar is one, this transistor is on and this Q will be retained and we pass the output so the value is hold correctly. In simple words, what we have done is we have connected a transmission gate with a phenomena that the output is equal to the input when enable is high. We also connected an inverter to get the complement of the output which is Q bar. Now we again connected another inverter which is nothing but back to back inverters to get the original value of Q and pass it through a control so that no problems of chart leakage or chart sharing can destroy the value and it can hold its value. So this is nothing but a D-latch using transmission gates. Let's quickly draw a neat diagram for the same. So this is my enable equal to one. This is my D. This is my PMOS which will have enable bar. Enable can be replaced by a clock also. This is going to be my inverter which will give me Q bar. This is Q. I am connecting to another inverter because I want to hold this value of Q. This is Q. But in order to avoid discrepancy between the new value and the old value when enable is high, I connect another gate control of a transmission gate which is exactly complementary to my transmission gate 1 in its inputs. So this becomes enable bar and this becomes enable and this is how it's going to be. So when this is on, this is not on. When this is on, this is not on. When enable is equal to one, Q is produced at D. When enable is equal to zero, this turns on and holds the previous value. This is nothing but in simple words, a D latch using CMOS transmission gates. Hope you have followed and further clips will be seeing how to implement a D flip flop and other circuits as well. Thank you very much and stay tuned.